Alright, so in this video we're gonna create, or in this tutorial we're gonna create a wall clock in 3ds Max and Substance Painter and we're gonna start off with a tube like this because it's gonna be such a great starting point for something that is cylindrical or circular. So I'm gonna follow a reference image here that I'm using in order to get accurate results. This is something we can do or we cannot do depending on how good you are or how accurate you want to be so uh, here you can actually um, do this and you can find of course the um, the reference image in my uh, patreon account or if you are um, not interested you can actually find uh, your own reference images on google images and you can um, kind of get inspired by this and create your own version it's up to you so here uh, you can see that i'm extruding these edges keep holding shift all the time in order to uh, in order to actually be able to create an extension so i'm gonna uh, i created a, um, a circle that has uh, 36 sides and each side by definition or as a result is gonna have four uh, actually nine edges and that's why I'm selecting every second uh, or every uh, nine uh, polygons or edges are going to be representing one side. So keep holding shift all the time in order to do this, in order to extrude these edges. And as you can see here, I'm extruding these edges as well because it's, it's going to have to be actually, um, we we're not going to leave out these empty spaces. So uh, as you can see here as well, I'm going to try to uh, weld these vertices either by welding them using the weld tool or by using the target target weld which is going to be a good tool as well but here you can see me actually using the cut tool which is a great tool to add extra extra edges and sometimes kind of um, reorganize or make the mesh go in a certain direction and uh, in an easier matter it's, it's kind of a shortcut all right so here i'm trying to see if there is anything we can actually weld using um, the weld tool if not we are going to try to follow the reference image we have here by moving these vertices around in order to do this properly okay so um by looking at it like this, it seems like um, we actually can separate this model here into two halves. We are going to delete one and uh, we're going to only work with one. And later we're going to be able to bring it back when necessary using a tool like the symmetry, um, symmetry tool or a, the mirror tool in order to duplicate the other side. So, of course, the, uh, the reference image is not going to be perfect as a result. Uh, don't expect that the, the the extension we are extruding here using the uh, using the the, uh, the kind of the the shift from the keyboard uh, is going to uh, don't expect it to work perfectly uh, with alignment with the reference image we have because as we said this is kind of a photo it wasn't it wasn't intended to be used uh, for our purposes so. Uh, just keep that in mind so don't follow the reference image when it is not really um, taking you where you want to go so always follow the uh, the rules of physics <laughs> when or the math when 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 the when the world or when the map does not work as i said as i sometimes talked about this like there is the map and there is the world if the map is telling you that there is um, uh, kind of there is a lake in front of you and the world what you see with your eyes is telling you that there is a mountain in front of you do you believe the map or do you believe the uh, what your eyes are seeing this is kind of similar situation here except that uh, what you see we can consider here the the laws of math like uh, straight lines and uh kind of horizontal alignments and vertical alignment and uh, we cannot actually create something that you sh should be straight and uh 
in order to follow the reference image we are gonna somehow kind of bend it or kind of tilt it a little bit because the reference image is going in that direction so yeah we uh probably i talked about this more than it should probably it was helpful probably it was a distraction from what we should talk about here so anyways we are here trying to uh follow the uh, the reference image as little as we can because as you see as you see there is some some things we can take from it some other things we cannot so um we are trying to extrude some edges here this is something we usually do a lot and it is not something complicated and uh, for for um for this model and i think this is not going to be a lot different so for the most part what you need to know is uh, extrude your edges keep holding shift from the keyboard all the time in order to move and extrude your edges and follow me what i am doing here and you should be fine so i just duplicated it duplicated this just keep holding shift in order to create the uh this version and um uh we're going to i just flipped it using the mirror the mirror tool and or i didn't yet probably i was not really focusing on what what i was doing all right so here i'm trying to reduce the um i actually flipped it uh the um to reduce the poly count uh, actually i was thinking about removing it altogether the back side because it's not going to be seen in the first place probably later i'm going to decide to remove it i'm not sure yet but if if it's gonna be the case um well there is nothing you can do probably i'm gonna i'm gonna remove it if the poly count is a little bit high so after you do this uh, we'll try now to uh we'll try to uh connect these two halves somehow and first of all we need to connect them probably i'm gonna i'm gonna remove it probably there is a big probability that i'm gonna that i'm gonna remove it but anyways for now for our purposes here we're gonna try to make sure that everything is working properly um hmm, let's just see if there is gonna be something we can do here using the using the snap tool is not gonna help us that much because because there are better ways probably to do this and uh for now we're gonna create uh the the, the upper part we're gonna create this piece of wood on top this is kind of a cap or the ceiling or whatever and uh, we're gonna um, try to create whatever we are gonna try here uh, to be honest here i wasn't uh focusing too much on what i was doing so i always kind of tried to was trying to do this in a traditional manual way then manual way then i decided that is not going to be a good idea so probably using the box is going to be better and is going to help us generate our results um in a kind of better way to be honest because this will allow us to work on one corner and the other three corners are going to be taken care of automatically so uh, convert this out of poly remove all the polygons from the top and the bottom because they are no longer necessary since they are subject to change by what we're going to do right now and keep holding shift and start adding your changes using the move tool and using the uh, the scale tool in order to uh, perform this also in order to to make your your surface transparent alt x from the keyboard which is the shortcut for x-ray i repeat alt x from keyboard from the keyboard alt x and what you're gonna do now is um you're gonna do what uh, you do best which is creating polygons and um yeah extruding the, uh, the the polygons as you can see and switching don't forget to switch from uh your front or side perspective to the view uh actually the the front or, or side view 
to the perspective because it keeps it keeps things in perspective and which means of course that you're gonna have an eye on what you're doing and you kind of don't get lost in the details and you actually lose um, sight of the big picture and what you're doing actually in the third uh, in the in the third dimension which is the most important thing in the end of the day so we're going to extrude these polygons here and um, using the extrude tool in, from the list of modifiers or the list of tools in the edible poly modifier and we're going to modify some of these polygons as you can see no no big of deal actually and it seems like right now we're going to make it a little bit um, change some of these uh, the position the position of some of these vertices and um, the alignment tool here is not gonna help us that much unless we uh, unless we align edges uh, which is uh, something we can do later but for now I'm gonna focus on other things like uh, we are gonna delete this part after we uh, cut it in half and we're gonna close the back side uh, we cannot leave it as it is sometimes we can but I'm not gonna leave it as it is so uh, what we're gonna do is we'll try to bridge create lots of bridges so we're gonna select some polygons and uh, select polygons and create bridges this is what we're gonna do so um, select some of these polygons on the side just test if this is gonna work all right it worked perfectly so select the others like this and they should be bridged like this okay this is good now we're gonna jump to something else even though this is kind of taking longer than I expected but uh, it is kind of part of the process and uh, for the purposes of training and education and in order for you to follow me, uh, I'm not gonna. I wasn't really trying to speed up the process too much and use too much shortcuts, even though sometimes I can't help it but to use shortcuts. All right, so we just copied the um, the piece from the top in order to to gain some time and avoid repetition, and of course to keep the proportions. Um, uh, accurate because this is helpful and it is a good thing to do to avoid um, losing the um, your proportions between the top and the bottom of our model so right now we're gonna select few edges and uh, we're going to create uh, we connect connected these edges like this in order for, for us in order for us to be able to extrude some other polygons and this is important for um, for what we're gonna do next so we're gonna select these a few polygons the three uh, representing the three sides and extrude them like this and of course we're gonna stop war when when we reach the top or when we are supposed to, supposed to stop so um, Now we will align the uh, the the height of these vertices to to be honest right now when I'm recording this because this is a voiceover uh, I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing I kind of was really sometimes when you do things for a long period of time you you acquire the ability to do things without even thinking about what you're doing and at that point you will actually run on the autopilot and autopilot does not sometimes do uh, what is optimal it does do what it kind of goes with the flow and things like these so um, uh, if you seem actually doing stuff not using the uh, what kind of should be done in that particular situation then uh, um, please forgive uh, my lack of accuracy and use of perfect uh, methods let's just say 
So uh, here we are gonna create the uh, the inside of our clock, and uh, we just used uh, part of the uh, the mesh we created before, and. And we're creating the um, some of the pieces that are inside. This is actually not that complicated. We are just creating small pieces that are going to be representing some of the uh, representing some of the small props or not props, just small mechanical pieces that are not going to take that. Um, that they are gonna be, they're not gonna be that important. First of all, or initially, I was thinking about not modeling these at all, like keeping it empty and using um, my thought about using an image that is gonna represent the whole thing, like the numbers and these small pieces that uh, that are inside. So. Um, then I thought, well, we probably are gonna model them so it looks good uh, uh, in wireframe mode, and <laughs> which is a ridiculous reason. I actually wanted to model them for the sake of modeling them, even though this is not gonna be optimal. So if they actually also model these is important if someone wants to animate the clock for some reason. And having these pieces is important for that purpose only. All right, right now we are working on some of these pieces. Um, we are taking our time. I'm not. I'm not really interested in. Um, since I said before, this is kind of for people who are following what I'm doing and for teaching purposes. I'm not gonna use the uh, the expert way. Of creating stuff which is using lots of shortcuts even though sometimes I do use shortcuts which is something kind of come with uh, what we do because I'm not always focusing on the uh, the mission at hand which is explaining what I'm doing All right, we just copied that um, that that one we created, and we're using it right now in order to be able to work less and work smarter. Okay, good. Now we need to to put it in uh, in the right place because. It is important that we do so. All right, so uh, change the material of the whole thing, position our pieces in the right place. And uh, we're going to do something else like we're going to select all these polygons here and just copy them or de de detach them as a clone. Meaning, detaching as a clone means that we're going to use, um, uh, we're going to create a detach, but the, uh, the original polygons are going to stay with the original piece. So, just we're kind of creating a copy. Actually, you can. The other way around this, you can actually copy that piece and detach it like you 
normally would detach something else but that option the detach uh, tool is is awesome it allows you to do something that kind of you can only do in two steps so for now we're going to um, we're going to create the other parts inside the clock for example here this cylinder uh, we're going to go probably with a few um, or probably um, I, we, we created this this cylinder probably has it has 32 sides which is good enough uh, uh, because uh, looking at it uh, it seems like uh, from the size of it it seems like it is something reasonable because if we have cylinders that are big then we have to give them more sides and in order to avoid kind of uh, weird looking edges and stuff All right, so uh, we created the um, this piece and the the wooden piece as well. Also, we need to create this needle, this small cylinder, and the needle as well. I don't know what is the purpose behind using this, but it is something we need to create because we need to because uh, we need to follow our reference image, right? Alright, so convert this to Urban Poly and um, use always, keep holding shift all the time and uh, kind of extrude our edges. Alright, so instead of using that cylinder, um, we're going to extrude some of the edges related to or attached to this needle. Use local normal because this is the best way of doing it. Alright, so now we're going to start modeling some of these ornaments and uh, in order to do this uh, we're going to have to follow the reference image and uh, the details that we can see even though we're not going to follow them exactly because uh, because obviously there are more details than we can follow and it's kind of uh, it's going to be too much if we do this and if we want actually better and accurate more accurate results we we can use um, text uh, sculpting software such as ZBrush in order to sculpt these details and stuff. 
but for keeping for the sake of keeping things simpler than uh, than they could have been if we did this we're gonna stay on uh, in our course and uh, we're gonna do the uh, the work in 3ds max but of course we are gonna get simpler results and more modest uh, looking details and we're gonna follow the uh, the the reference image uh, keep only shift all the time in order to in order to do this and extrude our edges and if you can see uh, if you can see uh, the transparent uh, polygons here uh, on your screen probably um, you can imagine them I would say I'm really so sorry if you can't uh, see what I'm doing because this is the only way we can do this properly at least the the way I can do and create these uh, these polygons and create the shapes we are trying to create here Alright, so um, this is kind of the other the other half of our uh, piece of ornament here. All, all the time, or always, uh, keep holding shift and uh, rotate and move in order to extrude. I right, just um, rotate this or copy this keep on the shift all the time in order to copy it and uh, try to position it properly and accordingly and apply the shell modifier in order to give it some thickness thickness is important here because um, this is gonna be something that uh, is gonna be on top of the, the surface I chamfering the um, the sides a little bit is is important for uh, for kind of how the the look we are after. It's important to to do this in order to create that part specifically. So right now we are gonna use the a, di a different reference image actually in order to create that ornament on the side. And we're going to create it the same way we created the previous one. Uh, keep holding alt X from the keyboard in order to um, uh, see through the polygons. And keep holding shift and creating uh, 
these polygons. Of course, we're not going to follow all the details here because this is extremely um, complicated co compared to the polygonal modeling we're doing here. So probably we're going to get these, these these details later in um, um, in texturing in Substance Painter. Right, apply the shell modifier in order to give it thickness. All right, so right now we are going to use this uh, in order to generate uh, the glass ceiling, and um, uh, we're just need going to need this one, and the other polygons are going to be deleted like we we've seen right just now. So uh, I think for now the um, the process of modeling is over, and uh, what we will do is we're going to create. Uh, create layers here and in the layer manager we're gonna create two layers one for the high poly and one for the uh, low poly because this is what we need to do since this is a game ready model and uh, yeah All right, so uh, right now we are working on the high poly version of our model, and specifically we are uh, working on support edges. So support edges are are important because uh, when we apply the smoothing modifier later or the tuber smooth, things are gonna are gonna get soft, and this way we're gonna ensure that uh, edges that are supposed to be hard. Uh, are going to stay hard and the others are going to be smooth uh, as they should and this is this process is easy and repetitive so probably here I'm not going to talk much so yeah it's kind of it's, uh, this process kind of explains itself just by looking at what I'm doing
All right, so I think this is it for this part one. And this is for the high poly model here. And um, yeah, um, I hope you learned something here because uh, the the rest of the um, the rest of the tutorial is actually on Patreon. If you want to check it out, link in the description below, or just go to Patreon slash Inspiration Touch, and you're gonna find this uh, the next tutorial or the next part of this one, and the rest that we created throughout history. So um, yeah, thank you very much for being here, and I will be very glad to see you on the other part.